What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be flying the Autel Evo 2 Pro for the very first time. Now you may think that this video is redundant because only a couple of months ago I flew the Autel Evo 2 8K for the first time from this same very spot, and both of these drones are pretty much identical in terms of the airframe. The only difference is the camera on the front, so obviously we already know how the Autel Evo 2 Pro is going to fly, but as you guys may have seen from some of my previous videos, I'm not that big a fan of this drone and how it flies. The remote controller feels a little bit awkward to hold. Um, the actual drone itself when it's flying ludicrous mode kind of seems to be all over the place So after they've updated the firmware a couple of times I want to reestablish my opinion on this drone and how it flies now The biggest difference between these two drones and really the only difference is that camera on the front and the difference in size alone is pretty drastic I mean the cube shaped camera on the Altel Evo 2 Pro is larger to hold a larger sensor Of course, we've got the one inch sensor opposed to the half inch sensor in the smaller camera the spherical shaped camera on the Altel Evo 2 8k also, I've just got to say that the gimbal guard on the Altel Evo 2 Pro is massive. I've never seen a gimbal guard this big, and honestly, it's not my favorite. It's kind of hard to get on and off. Maybe it's something I've got to get used to, but... That gimbal guard, man, is definitely something worth talking about. All right, so let's continue to talk through things here while we put the Altel Evo 2 Pro up into the air. Lift off here, spin it up and around, facing it down towards the river. So the Evo 2 Pro obviously has a better camera on it. It's got a camera that offers a lot of benefits over that standard camera that comes with the Altel Evo 2 standard, I guess. Now, it doesn't shoot in that high resolution, the 8K resolution, but we still get 6K resolution with the Altel Evo 2 Pro, which I'm not complaining about. 8K resolution, in my opinion, is overkill. A drone like this that's meant for prosumers... 8K just doesn't make sense, so 6K I'm very happy with. So we are filming this video right now in 6K. Um, also, another benefit that comes with this drone is the fact that we have an adjustable aperture from f2.8 up to f11. So if we look up here, I'm actually using aperture priority because I don't have an ND filter on this. So I'm cranked all the way up at f11 just because we're flying around here for the very first time. I don't want to have to worry about changing the exposure. It's just kind of going to be a first flight thing. But the great thing here is we can crank our aperture all the way up to f11, thus lowering the shutter speed. Okay, so we'll hide that little menu towards the bottom. We'll start flying down the river here. Now, if you guys remember, in my first Altel Evo 2 flight video, uh, I didn't change into ludicrous mode. And, okay, I'll say that that's my fault, but here's the thing, is that getting to ludicrous mode is such a pain. So, we're going to fly in the standard mode now, uh, and things seem to be smooth here. I mean, look, there's not a lot to complain about when you're in the standard mode. Just moving side to side here, I've got my EXP set to 0.35. I've got my gimbal pitch speed set to 10. Um, and yeah, I mean, when you're flying in standard mode, this drone feels great. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the remote controller, but right now we're buzzing at, what, 22 miles an hour. That's the top speed in that standard mode. And all is good. I mean, this drone feels great when you're flying it, but let's switch things over here in the ludicrous mode, which you've got to go into the menu, tap on ludicrous, tap close, tap on 45 miles an hour. It's just such a headache to try, and to get, try to get into ludicrous mode. So now let's push this drone forward. We're going to see if we can get to that top speed of 45 miles an hour. Um, and we'll see if we notice any variation in the drone pitching to the left, like I did with the Altel Evo 2 8K. So we're at about 40 miles an hour right now. Things are looking really good here. Oops. That's another pain about the remote controller is that, like, the buttons on the back, the custom buttons, are super easy to press. So I do notice the drone is kind of veering to the left here, which I don't want to happen. But other than that, the drone feels great. Have some pretty nice control over it. And I can say that right off of the bat, I'm definitely not experiencing some of those horrible problems I was having with the Altel Evo 2 8K. There it is. It's kind of pitching to the left. All right, let's bring this drone back around. Two things I'm just... Oh, nice little shot of Philly there all the way in the background. Um, something that I'm always impressed with with this drone is the fact that it's got excellent flight time and excellent range, right? I mean... I'm never let down with how far this drone can fly, and also I always look at the, the battery percentage. Like right now, we just flew 4,000 feet down, and we've got, what is our battery percentage on this drone? 83%. I mean, we flew 4,000 feet, almost a mile, and we still got a ton of battery left. So we're going to take this opportunity right now to get a little bit of footage with the sun at our back so that we can take a look at the footage after the fact, right? We've got a larger sensor on here. It's a one-inch sensor opposed to a half-inch sensor, um, and we are shooting in 6K. I mean, look, people are going to say that 6K is an 8K, but I think that 
6K footage is gonna look great. I also notice a big difference in the control of this drone, and it's kind of making me wonder now if I just have a bad Autel Evo 2 8K. Um, you know, I made that video about the Autel Evo 2's biggest problem, but I'm not really noticing it here in this video. And the drone is getting after it. It's hitting that top speed of 45. Right now, it's not. I'm kind of rotating. Let's see. Let's just push it straight forward. Topping out at about 36 miles an hour, but we are about 300 feet high, 200 feet high. We could be experiencing some sort of wind that we don't feel down here. So I'm hoping the sun comes out. It's kind of a cloudy, crappy day here. But I am going to go and drop down to the 34 mile an hour top speed limit of ludicrous mode and I'm gonna drop down in between these trees come up and over to that view of Maniunk. I do see the drone pitching left and right a little bit look at the end of the day this drone is not going to be as smooth as what say DJI offers with their Mavic lineup those drones just they fly so great any DJI drone is just like a Ferrari this drone feels more like all right I'm not gonna go as low as saying like a Chevy or a Ford even though I drive a Ford um, if the DJI series, the Mavic series and the Phantom series is like a Ferrari, I would say that this is like an Acura, a Lexus. I guess that's a good comparison. All right, so flying down, we've got the sun towards our back, not hitting the trees, but it is hitting the buildings in the back there. This is just such a beautiful view, in my opinion. Great being able to look out over it and especially fly a drone over it. So. I can't tell what the footage looks like because I'm just looking through the live transmission feed, but this video again is being uploaded in 6K, uh, and afterwards we're going to sit down, review the footage. Video signal is starting to get a little bit weak here. Alright, we're going to spin her around and bring her back. We do have the remote controller facing the total opposite direction, so it's to be expected that we get a weak video signal. Also, we've kind of got the corner of the building in our way. So we've got the sun ahead of us. Kind of disregard what this footage looks like right now because I'm not, I'm not trying. I just want to kind of get myself in position. I'm going to try and go low over near the train over here. Um, you guys probably can't see what I'm pointing to. So let me angle the drone. We've got a train over here. So let's go above it and point the camera straight down. The gimbal does feel a little bit touchy. I kind of wish that they would add more gimbal tuning settings to this. The smoothness, it would be pretty sweet if this uh, train started moving. The smoothness would be great to change. Um, the speed would be great to change. You can only change the EXP settings. Let's see, because we're looking down, what is our aperture at? All right, let's, let's move the aperture down a little bit because it is gonna be a little bit darker. So we'll go F5.6. That'll give us some good flexibility here. The menu system is not horrible in the Explorer application. In my opinion, it's not the best. I wish it showed a little bit more information. It definitely is missing a lot of things. All right, so let us push the drone down the tracks. Got to remember I'm in ludicrous mode. Having 6K on a prosumer drone, in my opinion, is really all you need. Uh, I've looked at the difference between 6K and 8K on the Autel Evo 2 Pro. I know we're right in the middle of taking a shot here, but I'll flash a quick example up on the screen from just a still frame. And there's not a huge difference between 8K and 6K. I mean, would you rather go with a drone that can shoot 8K, big whoop over 6K, or would you rather something that's got the adjustable aperture, uh, something that's got a larger sensor, it's better in low light. Now let's go the opposite way. I hear the engine starting to kick up, so I kind of hope that we can catch this train moving. Even though when it comes through here, it moves relatively slow, it'd still be cool to capture that. So my thoughts so far on the Autel Evo 2 Pro uh, are great. Uh, it's making me wonder why my Autel Evo 2 8K flies the way that it does. The great thing about this is that I've got the opportunity to put this camera on the Autel Evo 2 8K body that I have, or I guess vice versa. So if I want to use the 8K camera, I can put that on this body, which seems to be flying much better than my previous drone. We'll go a little bit lower here, spin around. When you're in ludicrous mode, it kind of feels a little bit touchy. Uh, and it's kind of unfair to only point the Autel Evo 2 out in saying that because with a lot of the other drones, like the Mavic Air 2 or really any DJI drone, you're going to inevitably get, I would say, more touchy controls in sport mode. We'll fly down the tracks here, now angling a little bit differently. 
my main purpose for this video, uh, while also getting a sense for how the drone flies, is to just get some footage and look at it after the fact and really see how this thing flies. Oh, I'm sorry, how the camera looks. I'm a little bit backwards today. All right, so I'm veering a little bit off to the left. It is a little bit harder to control than I would prefer in a drone uh, when we're talking about sport mode flying. I know that there's a lot of people out there that'll say sport mode really isn't used to get cinematic shots. I beg to differ. I think that ludicrous mode and sport mode, both of them in general, uh, are very useful tools. I mean, you want a drone that flies fast to keep up with objects. And when I'm trying to track boats with this drone, specifically speaking the Evo 2 8K because I haven't flown this drone yet, this is my first flight. I don't know. I just, I wish there was more. I wish that it was more precise. Um, all right, so that should be a fairly good sample. We will spin around now. Now we've got the sun at our backs, so this actually might give us a better understanding of how the camera looks. I'm afraid to get any lower than this because of those wires. I don't know if you guys saw in my Mavic Air 2 first flight video, I was buzzing down the train tracks very low, and immediately as I said to myself, I don't think that there's any low hanging wires, I had to pull the brakes on my drone because there were low hanging wires. Alright, so everything feels good, everything looks good. I still want to take the time to sit down and go over, see I'm easily pressing those back buttons. I want to take the time to sit down and go over this footage a little bit uh, and then give you guys I guess my final thoughts and opinions on that footage. Let's get a little bit lower down here and I'm going to flip into standard mode just because we're getting into close quarters. We'll kind of follow this building along here. Nice orange. The one thing about the Evo 2 8K's camera is that I feel like with the greens, it was too neonish. Like the greens were very, I don't know what, what the right word is. The greens were very green. There wasn't enough yellow in them. All right, I'm gonna be a little bit risky here and fly close to the train. This will be the last shot that we get. And this will be a really great, I guess, uh, clip to look at after the fact to analyze what the quality looks like. Look at all that traffic up there. See, the controls feel touchy. You see the drone is like changing its speed. It's altering its speed. I do love that orange though. It's easy to find. Aesthetically, I'm not a huge fan of it, but for flying a drone, it's great. See, I can even see the drone even though I'm pushing the stick forwards. It's like teetering a little bit. Alright, that's a little bit weird. I'm still accidentally pressing these buttons. Let's bring it back and I'll meet you guys inside when we go over this footage. Alright, so I took a look at the footage shot from the Altel Evo 2 Pro. I've got to say, it looks great across the board. We'll get into that in just a couple of minutes, but I quickly want to address something about the Altel Evo 2 as a whole. The Altel Evo 2 airframe, regardless of which camera you've got on the front, the 8K camera or the Pro, the 6K camera. So if you guys remember about, I'd say a little over a month ago, uh, actually specifically speaking, it was on May 17th, 2020, I uploaded a video about how the Altel Evo 2 has got one big problem, and it's the fact that it doesn't fly straight. Now to save you guys a headache of having to go back and watch that video, I'll quickly drop a clip in this video to show you what I mean. The drone when flying in ludicrous mode straight would kick to the left, it would veer to the left, the entire drone would rotate to the left side. Sometimes when I tried to compensate for it, it would then kick to the right side, thus ruining a ton of the shots I was trying to go for with the Altel Evo 2. Now as you guys can probably imagine, it was incredibly frustrating to have to try and go for that same shot over and over and over again, not because I'm a perfectionist and I wanted to nail the gimbal and the drone movement, but it's because my equipment failed me. It's because the Altel Evo 2 has this one big problem and it's the flight of the drone. Yeah, it's got a great camera, yeah, it's got a great battery, but at the end of the day, the drone just didn't fly well. There was three minor issues I came across with the drone. It would kick to the left like I showed you guys in those example videos. Uh, also, it would randomly decrease its altitude and also the flight speed was inconsistent, like the drone would kind of teeter forwards. Sometimes it would increase its speed. Sometimes it would decrease its speed. It was just very weird. So with all these issues that I had, I fully expected to get the Altel Evo 2 Pro up in the air and encounter the same issues 
but I was shocked to see the drone actually flew a lot better. So just for comparison, I went and put the Altel Evo 2 Pro up in the air, and then I put the Altel Evo 2 8K up in the air to kind of establish where this problem lies. So with the Altel Evo 2 Pro, I've got to say this thing flew so straight. Also, just on a side note, I know this video is kind of about the camera, and you can just tell that through this live view, that camera is going to give us a great image. But nonetheless, the drone flew straight. There was no issues whatsoever. I've got a top speed here of like 39, 41 miles an hour. Uh, and yeah, it flew beautifully. But if we look at the Altel Evo 2 8K flying basically the same exact course, it did a really good job up until the end when I started to lose connection where the drone would just kind of kick to the left a little bit. It felt a little bit unstable. So I figured I'd spin around, fly back the same way. And there it happens. The drone kicks to the left. You can see the propeller enters the top right portion of the frame. And I had to stop because there, if I was shooting a video clip, it would have been totally ruined. So with everything that I found up until this point, it's got me really curious to understand exactly where the issue lies with the Altel Evo 2. I've got two airframes that are exactly identical, right? Of course, this system uses the same airframe and you've got three different cameras mounted on the front. And the difference in the camera really shouldn't impact the flight characteristics of the drone whatsoever. I've got one drone in my right hand that flies great. I would say near perfect. There's a couple of kinks I could iron out to make this thing better, definitely, but I've got another drone in my left hand that doesn't fly well at all. I would say that it flies like crap. That's the one reason why I was turned away from the Altel Evo 2 as a whole, but the Evo 2 Pro has restored my faith, and it's not to do with the camera on the front, it's just the fact that I've got a different airframe. So as I begin to figure out exactly where the issue lies, I begin to kind of see a pattern, or I guess I kind of have some findings and some thoughts that I want to share with you guys. So I'm going to instantly rule out pilot and operator error because of course I've got one drone that flies great and the other one just seems to have a mind of its own. I'm also going to rule out software because I've got the same firmware on both of these drones. So I'm trying to think what is different between the two of them. Well, the purchase date is different between two of them. I got the Altel Evo 2, I'd say about two months ago, and I just got the Altel Evo 2 Pro. Now, a little under a week ago, they were both made and manufactured at different times, so... It leads me to believe that Altel has got some quality control issues. Maybe they implemented a hardware fix in the meantime for a problem that they found with the Altel Evo 2 in that time. So it's got me wondering exactly where that issue is. Is it in the hardware? Is it a quality control issue? I'll definitely keep you guys updated, but up until this point, I really don't have a solid answer for you. I've seen some people say their drone flies great. I've seen some people say that they're experiencing the same issues as I do, and I only hope that it's not a hardware issue that they fixed, they quietly fixed in, I'd say, the last couple of months in production, uh, and it's actually something they can fix with a firmware or software update. So let's get back to the whole entire purpose of this video, and that's to analyze the 6K footage on the Altel Evo 2 Pro. Now, of course, I didn't have the best lighting conditions here today when flying with the Evo 2 Pro is a little bit cloudy and it's kind of been that way for the past couple of days but I picked out three different clips that were my favorite and I've just got to say across the board I am so impressed with this camera it's sharp it has a lot of detail in there. The colors are on point. And I've got to say that for being an automatic exposure, it does a really good job of balancing like the highlights and the shadows. I mean, I don't have many deep shadows in here, but I'm also very impressed with the dynamic range. I've got to say that in my time using the 8K camera and the Pro camera, the Pro camera seems to handle greens better. Like they were very neonish in the 8K camera. I believe I said that earlier in the video, but regardless, in this clip flying up over uh, Maniunk here, and then also in this clip, where I was looking down at the train. I'm very impressed, but it doesn't begin to really shine until I show you the clip where I flew down close to the hotel they're building here next to my apartment. And then as I begin to continue down towards the train. Now I'm so much closer to my subject matter, so it is a lot sharper. And because I'm shooting in 6K and uploading it here in 6K, I've got the benefit of being able to crop and zoom in if I need to. Now, I don't do this all the time with uh, my drone footage, but it is great to be able to take that 6K footage and downsample it to 4K. I love the colors, I love the sharpness. 
I actually love the way the drone flies. I know that we were talking about that earlier, and it's kind of like a taboo subject now because I've got no idea what's wrong with the Altel Evo 2 and its flight characteristics, but regardless, I'm really impressed with everything that came from the Altel Evo 2 Pro. So look, this of course doesn't end my coverage of the Altel Evo 2. This was only my first flight video with the Pro version of the drone. Of course, they share the same airframe, but I'm really excited that I've got both cameras here so I can continue to provide you guys with content surrounding the Altel Evo 2. I've kind of got mixed feelings now. Like at first I thought I was set. I thought I knew what my opinion was of the Altel Evo 2 because of my time flying it with the 8K camera mounted on there. I thought that it just didn't fly well, but now I kind of am conflicted because I've got a drone that flies straight and flies like really any other drone should. Now, if they could only upgrade and update this remote controller, that would be a welcome change. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you own any of the Altel Evo 2s, how does your drone fly? Does it fly straight again, like any drone should, or does it have that issue where it kicks to the left and it decreases altitude and kind of randomly sporadically increases and decreases its speed? Let me know down in the comment section below. There will be a lot Lot of great videos coming out from the Altel Evo 2 Pro. I really want to take advantage of that camera shooting some photos and videos, so stay locked here on my channel and check out my Instagram. My handle is at Billy Kyle. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.